Hi, Vanessa here. In this video, I am going to demonstrate how to knit this easy garter stitch scarf. So this is going to be a beginner's tutorial. So the techniques you're going to be using is casting on, knit, purl, slipping a stitch, and casting off. So quickly, this scarf here is approximately, let's see, that's 16 inches and it's folded in fours. So it's 64 inches. I used two balls of this yarn here and I kept going until I was running low. So this is what's left of the second ball. So this is Loops and Threads Kaleidoscope. They discontinued this yarn, which I'm really sad about. Um, but it is super bulky weight yarn and each ball has 77 yards. So I used almost two balls. So it's almost 154 yards minus whatever was left. Um, but it is super bulky weight yarn. And I used a US 17 12 millimeter needle. I used a long circular needle because it's more comfortable for me. But you can definitely use a set of straight needles. Now this one that I have is actually smaller, but I'm going to use this in the tutorial. And if you use this size here, your scarf will be a little bit smaller. So grab your US 17 12 millimeter needles. You'll need a pair of scissors and grab a stitch marker to mark the front of your work so that you don't get lost because even though the garter stitches is mostly knit on both sides, the side edges are a little bit different on each side. And then you'll need a tapestry needle. If you want more information on what is used and what you need, you can click on the link in the description box for more information on the pattern. This is a free pattern. Um, the PDF is also free. You can go ahead and grab that on my website or on my Ravelry page. All right, so we're going to start with a cast on and I'm going to cast on using the long tail cast on, which means that you'll need a long tail to start your cast on. Now I only cast it on 12 stitches. You can definitely cast on as many as you want for the width you want. And in order to do that, you'll need a gauge swatch and figure out how many stitches per inch you have. For this pattern, it's going to be five inches wide. The great thing about this is it's a scarf. If it's off a little, it really doesn't matter because it's not a garment where you need it to fit properly. So I'm going to start with about 16 inches of tail. Now the tail end is going to be in front of me and the working yarn where the ball is, is going to be furthest away from me. Okay, so you want to start with a slip knot holding your tail. Remember you want to start here where you have about 16 inches. So you want to hold the tail, wrap the yarn around your fingers over the tail and then just grab the working yarn from this loop here and pull. Okay, place your needle onto your loop and tighten it. Okay, you don't want it too tight because you'll need to work into the loops. So just so that it's snug. So now the tail is in front of you and your working yarn is furthest away from you. Now place your finger and thumb into this space here and then you want to open and then grab the rest of the yarn with your other fingers and then swing back. So this loop here counts as a stitch. So I'm going to cast on 11 more stitches for a total of 12 stitches. So using the needle and I like to hold my finger here so it doesn't slip off. You're going to take the tip of your needle go under this strand here. So it's the closest strand to you um, on your thumb. You're going to go under and up and then right here, the strand closest to you from your pointer finger, you want to insert from the top. So you want to go top down 
and then this loop here you want to come back through so that's where you first insert it, your needle come back through let go and just kind of tug slightly you can grab this and put pressure on both sides so pull and tighten the loop on your needle again you don't want it too tight so that's two stitches you have on your needle okay remember okay you want to keep on casting on so again thumb and finger into in between your two strands grab the two tails with the rest of your fingers and swing back the tip of your needle under and up this first strand on your thumb closest to you and then over here from the top down and then back through this loop three stitches on your needle one more time under the thumb here over this strand here and back through this loop so you're always working on the strand that's closest to you from each finger or, or your finger and your thumb So if you choose to use a stitch marker that you have to place on your needle, you should do that right before you cast on your last stitch. So I have 11 stitches. I'm placing my stitch marker there. And now I'm going to cast on my last stitch. So now I'm going to turn my work. So every time I turn and I see the stitch marker on this side, I'm on the right side of my work. Now if you choose to just place a marker on your stitches so that it's you know that it's the front side you can do that and I'll show you how to do that later so now I'm going to start knitting my stitches and again this is going to be my right side I'm going to grab my second needle so here's what's going to be different on the sides on your right side you're going to slip the first and last stitch as if to knit and when you slip your stitches, you're going to insert your needle from the left to the right in this direction on the front loop. So here is the front loop and then right back here is the back loop. So we're going through this front loop here and we're going from the left to the right. Insert your needle through the front loop. Make sure this needle is on the bottom of this needle. So your working needle always goes under. So on the first stitch on the right side, you're going to slip your stitch as if to knit. So that's going in this direction here. And then you're just going to pull it off. Remember right side, slip first and last stitch. This first one is going to be a little loose. So after you knit your second one, you're going to want to tug on that. So I'm just going to slide the marker over. Now I'm going to knit the remaining stitches until the last one. So insert your needle from the right to left into the front loop. This is the back loop here. So this is your needle. Any the loops up here in the front, the loops back here are your back loops. So through the front, make sure this needle is under this one. You want to grab your yarn, the working yarn and wrap it around your needle and then pull it back through that space and then drop this stitch off your needle here okay so now that i've knitted my second stitch i'm going to pull the tail to tighten that part so you want to make sure that your working yarn is always on the bottom which is the back of your work you don't want it over here in the front of your work see how that 
is across your needles and to the front. You don't want that. That's only if you need to purl, purl. So with your yarn in the back side, insert your needle again through the front loop and underneath this needle, wrap your yarn and then pull it through this loop here and push off, push this loop off. Okay, with your yarn in the back or on the bottom, insert your needle, wrap your yarn. Now here's a little tip. When I wrap my yarn, I pull it all the way down to it's touching this loop here. And then I hold that tension while I push this down and I make sure that my needles are touching so that there's never a space for anything to slip off. Okay. So there's always contact between the two needles. So I come back up, I've pulled up this loop here. I've knitted this stitch. Now I'm going to push this loop off. Again. Okay, insert your needle, grab your working yarn, wrap it around. Again, I pull it down to this loop here and then I push with this finger keeping the contact with the tip of the needle to this needle and then pulling it through and sliding this off. So this is the traditional English style of knitting where you throw your yarn. Some people call it throwers. Insert your needle and I actually don't knit this way. I've been practicing so that I can have videos that will help both continental and English style knitters. Next stitch, wrap your yarn, I'm pulling it down so that it's touching the loop. Push this down. I'm keeping contact with my needles and then push off. I'm going to knit the next four and slip the last one. Okay, so here's my last stitch. I'm going to slip as if to knit just like I did the first one here. So inserting my needle in this direction, just as if I'm about to knit, but I'm just going to pull this off. Okay, now you turn your work and then this is going to be my wrong side. So I marked it here so that every time I turn, I know that this is going to be the right side because you're always starting on the right side of your work. Now on the wrong side, we're not slipping the first and last stitch. We're actually going to purl the first and last stitch and then knit the rest in between. So it'll look a little, a little weird here where your working yarn is coming out of this stitch and we didn't work this one. So it looks like it's just sort of a loner hanging out here by itself. Remember we needed our yarn in the back or the bottom when we're knitting. When you're purling, you need it in the front. Okay, so I'm going to hold that there and I'm going to insert my needle this time from the left to right. And I'm still working through the front loop. Again, I want to make sure my yarn is in the front or on top. Now I'm going to wrap the yarn just like I did before and I'm pulling it down to this loop. I'm keeping contact as I push this down and out this loop here. And then I'm going to push that off. Yarn in the back now because we're going to knit the remaining stitches until the last one. Okay, so insert your needle, wrap your yarn, pull this loop off. Insert your needle, wrap your yarn, push down through this loop and then push this loop off. Okay, so I'm going to knit across until the last stitch. Keep in mind when you knit, you want your yarn in the back or the bottom. And when you purl, you want your yarn in the front or on top of your work. Okay. 
Okay, I'm at my last stitch here. I'm going to slip this. So this is just something to mark your spot. We're just going to ignore it. We're just going to move it every time we reach the marker. Okay, so first and last stitch is purled. Now, this is important. You need to pull your yarn to the front. And then you're going to insert in this direction through the front loop, wrap your yarn, keeping contact, push it through, through the space, and then slide that one off. Okay, now you turn your work and you repeat those two rows. So now I see my markers here. I know I'm on my right side. If you were using one of these and you don't wanna place it on your needle, you can just slip it through one of these stitches and move it up as you work so that you know every time you turn and you see this, you know that you're on your right side. Okay, now I'm going to show this Continento. Continento is a lot easier for people who crochet because you're holding the yarn on your left hand like you would when you're crocheting. So yarn in the back, we're going to slip as if to knit first stitch, insert your needle just like you did two rows ago. I'm just going to move this and now I'm going to knit across. So I'm going to insert my needle, wrap my yarn and pull it through. Insert my needle, wrap my yarn. I'm still keeping contact, pull it through and then slide that loop off. Insert my needle, wrap my yarn, pull it through and push this loop off. Insert, wrap, pull through, slide off. Insert, wrap, pull through and slide off. I'm a lot more comfortable knitting Continental. I'm going to knit until the last stitch. Now I'm going to insert as if to knit and slip off. Okay, so now you just repeat those two rows until you have the length that you want for the scarf. So a couple of things to remember. So mark the side that is the right side so you know to slip the first and last stitch. You can either use a stitch marker that slides onto your needle or you can use a stitch marker that marks the front of your work. And then on the wrong side, you're going to purl the first and last stitch. Everything else in between is always going to be knit. Stitch. And when you knit, make sure your yarn is in the back. And when you purl, make sure your yarn is in the front. So I'm going to knit this last row and then I'm going to show you how to cast off. Now that you're ready to bind off or cast off, we're going to knit the first two stitches. Okay. So there's one, two. Now you're going to grab this first knitted stitch and bring it over this knitted stitch and then drop it. Okay, so using the tip of your other needle, insert it through the loop, hold this loop in place, bring the other loop over, and then dropping it off the needle. Insert your needle, knit your next stitch, and then repeat. Using the tip of this needle, move the yarn over and drop it over this stitch right here. So you're going to repeat that all the way to the end. And you can even cast off with a crochet hook. So if you crochet, this is really nothing but a slip stitch. So let's say I'm inserting my needle, grabbing the yarn, and then pull through. And then this one goes over, but with the hook, you can just pull through the loop that's on the hook. So if you find it easier, instead of doing this with your needle, you can just insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, and then pull through. Just make sure that your crochet hook is large enough so that it doesn't um, pull this tight. I'm just, I just grabbed the nearest crochet hook I had.
Okay, so you just want to cut your yarn. Make sure you leave a long enough tail that you can weave it in. So where the loop is, grab the tail and pull it through the loop and tighten that. Now you can grab your tapestry needle. So I'm going to use a different color um, just so you can see what I'm doing here. But of course you want to weave in your ends. So once you have your tapestry needle on your tail, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll just pretend that this is this yarn here. I'm going to insert it back into this loop here and I'm going to go through this loop here. I'm just trying to find a path right now. I'm going to look at this loop here. So this loop that goes right behind here and back through this way, I'm going to follow that. So I'm going to insert my needle through those two loops. Okay, so now we're going to follow this loop here. Okay, this is the loop that we're following. It's going, I'm trying to stretch this out so you can see. It's going under this loop and then around this loop and then back up here. So I'm going to follow that. So now you can see this little U shape here. I'm going to go through here and then I'm going to come back up here because I'm following the loop here. And then following the loop, it's going back over up here behind these two loops. And then you just keep repeating and it's going to go sort of in a zigzag direction because if you're following the loops, now it's going in here, see, and then it loops back in here and then back up to these two loops again. Okay, around these two loops. and back down here, okay? So you can see the pattern that it's going. It's looping around this, just like your garter stitches are doing. So you just want to follow those loops and weave in your ends. Okay, so that is how you make this quick and easy garter stitch scarf. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe for future videos. I'll see you next time.